going to be very happy for the election to be over. Yes. Yes. I'm ready. Because I've been watching. I'm a watcher, and I've been watching, I'll tell you that. No, and, I, what, what, and I am too, but I, I'm so, like so many of you have election fatigue. And, right. and the thing is, it's, it's all-consuming, but Jesus should be all-consuming. Well, because so I'm kind of like— And I told our audience just before we went on the air here— you know, this could be the last Christmas that we really can celebrate Jesus and say Jesus anymore because the way things are going, everything that is godly has been removed from this country. Right, right. And we're going to have a, a different Supreme Court makeup if, if, depending on the election. That's right. So I'm asking you to get out Amen. and vote. Yes, yes. And on election night, which is uh, November 8th. Eight. Eight. Tuesday, and uh, we're going to be live mm. on our internet. On yes. the, Roku. You go our to the live streaming mm -hmm. over Roku, Apple TV, and our website, jimbakershow.com. Now, how do they get to the, uh, the website? Yes, on any computer, right? Yes, go. Any, any computer, mobile device, anything that connects to the internet, you can just go to jimbakershow.com, click on the Watch Us Live Now link, and then you'll see all of us right there on the panel. And if you have Roku, which is an amazing network, yes, you can buy a Roku deal for about $100, and then it's free the rest of the time. That's right. That's right. You can go to Apple Network, mm -hmm. which Apple is a TV. huge network as well, mm -hmm. Apple TV. Apple TV is high definition, the yes. most beautiful yeah. picture. Oh. Yeah, and, it really is beautiful. And we just started... Uh, on WGN. That's right, yes. And uh, we've been accepted at Word. In fact, uh, we may go daily at Word. We're not sure yet, but, wow. but they've wow. invited us to. But other networks, it's amazing what's happening. And so they're not all compressed. That's but right. if you go to our, our websites and go to these, we're going to be on the air live until the results are in totally on <laughs> Tuesday night. Well, let's just pray November. to last night because I can't. <laughs> Be here all night long, Jim Baker. We'll be here. We, we don't want it's another. It's your duty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As okay. my wife, you I, have to stand by me. I will. I'm, everyone stand we're... by your man. Yeah. You ever hear that song? Oh, yeah. <laughs> if my candidate that I have chosen does not win, the end is nearer than you think. Yeah. Because we're in the final days. And we need a respite to be able to. I, I believe it's the harvest time. Right. Rabbi, it is. forgive me, I'm talking too much without you. Know. But <laughs> the harvest time is the end of the age, isn't it? There's going to be a great, don't you be, believe in a great ingathering? <laughs> yeah. I know I do. Yeah. Before the coming of the Lord. Yeah, it, it goes with a mystery of the age, that God has set up <laughs> the whole age like a Hebrew year. And the Hebrew year, the sacred year, ends with the autumn, and the, right now, and the autumn ends the harvest. So the autumn is the final in gathering. That's the time of the Feast of Trumpets. That's the time of, of tabernacles. So mm -hmm. what happens is when the, the sound of the trumpets comes, that's telling you your harvest is, is nearing, it's ending. Mm -hmm. So it's time to gather in. You gotta, whatever fields you have not reaped, you gotta do it now. Whatever you haven't done, you gotta get it in now because the time is coming to meet the Lord. So that is in the mystery of the Hebrew year. So yes, there is a great gathering there. So the Bible speaks of the final in gathering, speaks of the, the, the end of the age with a great harvest. That's what the angels are harvesting. You know, it talks about the wine, the wine press in Revelation. That's harvest. You know, the olive, actually the olives come around this time too. That's the olive tree, the church coming into fullness as well. So yes, the, one of the mysteries of the age is this is the final harvest. Yeah. Amazing. Absolutely. Love it. Some of my good friends have been on the shows lately. Yes. In fact, uh, yesterday, you and I were on the phone yes. with Governor Huckabee. We were. And it was an amazing, we were, we were on the phone with him for about <laughs> 45 minutes to an hour. I don't know how long it was. But he was amazing. Hmm. And I'll tell you what, if you could have heard him on the phone yesterday, you would have voted for Trump right then. Absolutely. You would have gone out and <laughs> cast a ballot at that yeah. moment. Yeah. But I, I love the man. Me too. He's been on our show. Yes. In fact, some of our friends have gotten together here to inform you about voting today. That's right. Could we roll that, Mondo? Could we roll that piece? Let's just, uh, I want you to hear from some of our friends. And if anything you can say about Trump is he's strong. Mm -hmm. yes. He's going to stand up to the terrorists. Yes. He's going to stand up to our enemies. 
and America has lost so much. And, and when he said, let's make America great again, it resonated with people, and they said, yes. With Donald Trump, he's already said uh, and submitted 11 names, made them public, and he has said, point blank, and I can quote him, he has said, he will appoint pro-life justices to the U.S. Supreme Court. For the sake of the Supreme Court and the future of our nation that Pastor Jim's talking about, that's why I am so convinced that he must be elected the next president of the United States. When you're on God's side, you're always on the right side. Yeah. Donald Trump is on God's side. Amen. But it's going to take somebody with the boldness of a Trump to get up there and turn some of the money changer mm -hmm. tables over yeah. to kick some butt. Hmm. Yeah. I'm just sorry. No, that's that, no, Amen. I'm sorry. We want to recognize, we want to stand up, we need to unify as a body of believers. Mm -hmm. We need to flex right now. And let yes. this nation see Amen. that the Christians came together, put our candidate into office in order to advance God's agenda. And then, you know what I like? And this is one promise I have from Donald Trump. He said, the Christians, the pastors, the leaders, it will be open door policy at yes, the White House. Yes, he did. Open door policy that we can call him. The one thing about democracy is that if you allow it to become humanistic and begin to feed your own morality, it will devour itself. Mm -hmm. It will devour itself. We cannot afford to be immoral. We need to vote morality. We yeah. need to vote That's the right. Republican platform. Right. Yeah. If, I, I want to ask you something. <laughs> if Donald Trump asked you to help in the White House when he gets in, would you help him? Would you advise him? Would you come walking and talking? Well, I, yes. The answer yes. is yes. I would do that. <laughs> Look, I'm working hard to try and get Donald Trump elected here. It is because the platform that the Republican Party stands for this year is the most conservative platform probably in the history of the uh, Republican Party. Mm -hmm. And Donald Trump has given us pledges publicly and privately that he will make sure that platform is seen through. We have this election between a globalist and a nationalist. This is the most important election in the history of the world because it stands in the middle of the most prophetic times this world has ever seen since the first coming of Jesus Christ. Out of loyalty, yes. we're holding to something that is not helping us but harming us. And wow. so we're going to have to begin to ask all people, not just African Americans, 50% of Catholics voted, uh, for, for the current president, mm -hmm. over 50% of women did, mm -hmm. but it was just lack of knowledge. And so this is going to help people understand. That's why you've got to get back to each of these issues mm -hmm. and teach people to vote for what's right according to Bible standards. Yes. I think a lot of people don't understand that America can only be free if it can do three things. Feed itself, fight for itself, manufacturing its own weapons of defense, and the third is to fuel itself. Let's build America and make it a strong and prosperous yes. country. Yes. Wow. Let's vote platform, because the platform is what each candidate and his team or her team have mapped out and planned very carefully what they want to do for us or to us if he or she is elected. That's what we have to look at. You've got to pray, you've got to think, and you've got to vote knowledgeably. Our future and our kids' and grandkids' future are depending on us. And if you don't vote, you're voting for the one who wins. This election, yeah. you need to get up and vote. Not only pray to America. A lot of people tell me, oh, I'm praying. You know what? I named my organization, our organization, Act for America. Not pray for America, not hope for America, not wish for America. You can do all the above. But you have got to get up and act in order to save the country. Right yeah. well, yeah. we got a lot. Wow. We have a lot more of our friends. going to be on this show. And I'm telling you, there's a good bunch of people. And and I'm telling you, I was with a, a, a conference yesterday. Probably 50 of the greatest leaders in America that are all voting for Donald Trump because they believe America's in trouble. We've got two choices. We've got the Republican 
And we have the Democrat. These are the party platform. We have it on our website. You can just go there, push a button, and it'll come right out of your printer. Just be ready with a lot of paper because <laughs> it'll it'll come up. I've asked you, Zach, mm -hmm. to to give us about a two-minute <laughs> resume okay. on the two platforms. Okay. Why Absolutely. I should or should not vote one of these platforms. All right, so we're gonna go for the jugular here, all right? So I have a sheet of paper that we've been working on going through the platforms, and this first sheet is called Reasons to Not Vote Democrat. And second one is, is Reasons to Vote Republican. And we're gonna go through these quickly because there's a lot, all right? Yeah. So the first one's on Reasons Not to Vote Democrat. The first one, now, I, this is from their platform. I even have the pages listed here. Number one, Hillary supports abortion in America. That's page 37. They will repeal the Hyde Amendment and put abortion on steroids. A small per, that means a small percentage of every dollar you make will be taxed to support abortion. That's what happens whenever you repeal the Hyde Amendment. So she supports abortion. She also supports abortion throughout the world. That's page 46 of the Democratic platform. Hillary is anti-Israel, page 49. No. Yes, the platform states that they will seek a two-state solution. So layman's terms, they will look to divide the land of Israel. I wasn't going to interrupt you, but mm -hmm. Rabbi, we got to interrupt him on this Israel thing. Did you read that? It's page 49. Yeah, actually, Hillary Clinton was one of the first people ever to come in, in American life, public, to come out in favor of a Palestinian state. This is before, before America even went near it. She was advocating. If you look at the statistics between Democrat and Republican, just when they take polls, uh, Democrats and Democratic leaders are more than twice as likely to be anti-Israel or, or the pro-Palestinian state than Republicans. Republicans are, by statistics, doubly in favor of Israel. And that is seen very clearly in the platforms. Uh, not only it's dividing Jerusalem, it's dividing Israel. And, and if you look on the Republican, I know you're going to get to it, Zach, the Republican platform is more pro-Israel now in this one than it has ever been, saying that the capital will be Jerusalem. And, will be Jerusalem. And, I mean, last night, Mm -hmm. I heard Donald Trump's son, absolutely, and, and uh, his family, they, they, they say the same thing. They're saying, we are going to, you know, unite Israel. We are going to uh, the it's United a, States, and we're going to build our embassy there. It's the there. embassy, yeah, yeah, because nations of the world have taken their embassy away from Jerusalem, saying we're not recognizing your capital. It'd be like if the nations of the world were saying we're not going to put any embassies in Washington because we don't recognize Washington, D.C. But, but it's only, it's far more than that, because this is Jerusalem. This is what God gave. So it's saying that, if Trump is saying, and, and the Republican platform is saying, we're going to take our embassy, put it there, saying that the capital the capital of Israel is Jerusalem. There is no other. That is it. That's what God says. Now keep saying God says it. This is God says. This is here's this is a biblical issue. This is issue. what you gotta get, people. We want to vote what God's word says. This is this is Zechariah. It says, now listen what it the, God says in those last days, the nations will try to move Jerusalem. Well, how do you do that? Oh. Well, by saying, you know, this is not your land, we change the borders. So this is exactly what we're talking about. So, but keep this in mind too. So this this God says, I will come against all those who try to move Jerusalem. Now, what it's saying is, and I'm saying this, and I'm not, listen, I want to get into some things too bad that we have to respect everybody before the Lord on this, their conscience. But if we are voting, if you vote for a platform, because you vote for a party and a platform that is saying we are going to basically divide Jerusalem, you are part of dividing Jerusalem. Oh. And what does that mean? God says, I am, I am coming against all those who try to move it. And everyone who tries to move it will will injure themselves. So when, when you are part of the process, when you're doing this, you are part of the process. And if you are saying, no, I'm voting for Jerusalem, you are certainly with the word of God and God's favor is upon it. Who, those who do that will prosper. We will be right back after this special message. The time to continue stocking your food pantry is now. This is our brand new food bucket prepared by our food suppliers at Augustine's Farms. And this is the most amazing 
new bucket of food, and it's bigger, better, it's heavier, it's got more variety of food in it. This food is great for times of emergency, or you can enjoy it now. Inside each of these easy-to-transport buckets are 283 servings of 25-year shelf-life food stored in easy-to-carry and open pouches for your convenience, or that can be used to barter for trade. We've increased the size of our buckets from six to seven gallons to make more room for 91 bonus servings, giving you a total of 374 servings in a single bucket. Call today, 1-888-988-1588, or go online to our website at jimbakershow.com. What are we offering that for? Wait, this is for a $175 offer for, for the bucket, yes, Pastor. You can also get four of these buckets in our year for you. This offer is valued at $700, but is available to you for a donation of $650 plus shipping. That's a total of 1,496 servings. In each of these buckets, you'll receive Morning Moose Regular Milk, Maple Brown Sugar Oatmeal, Buttermilk Pancakes, Hearty Vegetable Chicken Soup, Creamy Stroganoff, Fettuccine Alfredo, Italiano Marinara, Creamy Potato Soup, Black Bean Burger, White Rice, Instant Potatoes, Macaroni and Cheese, Chocolate Pudding, Creamy Chicken Rice, Cheesy Broccoli Rice, plus we've added these new items, Spanish Rice, Honey Wheat Bread, Honey Powder, and everything you need to make cheese pizza. Call right now with a donation of $1,200 or more to the ministry for eight of these incredible buckets of food, which totals 2,992 servings of food. For the best value, you can get our Time of Trouble offer, which is 28 buckets of this 25-year shelf life food for a total of 10,472 servings. This offer is valued at $10,995, but you can get it if you call today with a donation of $3,500 plus shipping. Where else can you get incredible, life-saving food at just 33 cents a serving? Call right now, toll free at 1-888-988-1588. That number again is 1-888-988-1588 or write to Jim Baker at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri 65615. You can also donate online and find other exclusive food offers at jimbakershow.com. Thank you for your continued prayers and support that helps keep us broadcasting around the world. Now, Italy, have you been seeing the earthquakes in Italy? Yes. You see, you know, one after another, one of the biggest earthquakes in the history of Italy. Their, their beautiful uh, chapels, the, the statues, their beautiful buildings have been, de you know, de de just Destroyed decimated flattering. to rubble, Lori. Yeah, yes. And what did you find out, Zach? Yes. Yeah, so and I we're going to stay right on a point, but yes. go to this one. Now, this is for actually from RT News. So this was like, this wasn't a, this is a secular news site. And uh, they were reporting on this. It says, Italian earthquakes were retribution for anti-Jewish vote at the UN. And they were quoting an Israeli deputy minister. So they even recognized that what Italy is trying to, put forth back on the table for a two-state solution. An Israeli deputy minister said, listen, the reason that Italy had that devastating earthquake is because of what they decided to put back on the table at the UN. Which is, the, this is the UNESCO uh, vote which said that Israel has nothing to do with Jerusalem, basically. It said that Jerusalem is a, an Arab holy site. The Temple Mount is an Arab holy you site. Know, you and know, they're an, Israel is, a, uh, they called it an occupying power. And then the earthquake. You're gonna learn uh, that God meant what he said. Yeah. That's the one thing America's gonna learn. And America's in a mess because she's turned her back on God. The, we can't continue this way. When, when you teach us this, mm, Rabbi, mm, mm. It, he's serious about Israel. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the other thing is that 
America and Israel are now at their worst relations in the history of America and Israel wow. under the Obama administration. But the one who, but oh, keep in mind, that you know, breaks my the, heart. the Secretary of State for the first half of this was Hillary Clinton, so she was part of that. Um, we, we know that, and this is a rule that goes back to the pharaohs. I mean, God is so absolute on this. Whatever, whoever blesses Israel shall be blessed. Whoever curses shall be cursed. And so America has been the most blessed nation on earth because we have blessed Israel more than any other nation. But we're turning a dangerous, perfect storm because because we're turning from God and Israel at the same time. And we know which way. Listen, this is the same party, and I'm not talking about everybody in it, but the same party last, last convention where Jerusalem was booed and God was booed. Do you they, remember that? Yeah. They, they took a vote. Yeah. You guys don't remember it? They booed God. And Jerusalem. Yeah. And, 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 they and that's and, and where we are right now in America. America is in trouble. You mm. say your vote don't count because people stayed home and that l stupid thing that says, well, I'm just trusting God. Faith without works, works is dead. dead. Wow. Faith without voting is dead. Do, do faith works. Let's put our works together. So you have a choice to actually be part of blessing Israel when it counts, mm -hmm. uh, for blessing Jerusalem when it counts. You're part of that whole picture that God says of the world and Jerusalem when, when you vote. So that it's not about a person here, it's about a platform, it's about issues, and it's not just the presidential, it's down the line, it's all down the line. But this has to do with Jerusalem. I mean, among, this has to do with every issue. Amazing this, and God promises to bless those who bless Jerusalem. Amen. It seems like politicians just think they can play. They can play with God, play with church, play with his rules, play with his Ten Commandments. God is not mocked. We can't play with what God has said. Let's go on with this okay. uh, reasons to vote, and this is the reasons not to that vote you're not Democrat. voting Democratic. That's it's, right. These are your rules. That's that right. You, I mean, are, this you, is what I came up with. That's out. right. So okay. I can be blamed for this. <laughs> Hillary supports anti-America Supreme Court justices. Page 25. If Hillary gets elected, she will appoint justices that will increase abortion. That's stated. Increase reproductive rights. That's abortion. Also, she will limit gun rights. And also she's going to restrict religious liberties. Remember that the president only sits for four to eight years while the Supreme Court justices, they sit for life. These are the people that mold and shape the fabric of our nation, okay? Now, how can I say that she doesn't support Christian liberties? On page 19, the platform of the Democratic Party platform says this, we support a progressive vision of religious freedom, a progressive vision of religious freedom, right. and reject the misuse of religion to discriminate. So in other words, they pick and choose what scriptures they deem uh, worthy, uh, okay? So they will only support religious freedom if it aligns with their progressive agenda. Number six, Hillary supports Obamacare. Enough said about that. Yeah. Hillary supports Whoa. disarming. Number seven, Hillary supports disarming our nuclear arsenal, all while Russia and other nuclear states have no intention of disarming. Hillary rejects the Keystone Pipeline, though natural resources is, is at the very core of what makes the country successful. Hillary says in the Democratic Party platform that she will send the Department of Justice to investigate with the intent of prosecuting businesses that are climate change naysayers. Page 29, read that. Yeah. Hillary supports a type of trade that is 100% socialism. The Democratic Party platform supports a Trans-Pacific Partnership. The TPP is NAFTA on steroids, which has destroyed our industries. The final result is America becoming a third world nation. Hillary supports an increase of 550% of, of refugees. Hillary supports free college tuition. Now, this will put a heavy tax on all Americans so that the government can support this free tuition. Yeah, you may get free tuition, but you'll be paying for it for the rest of your life with your high taxes. Thirteen, Hillary supports open borders. Hillary is a globalist. Okay, that's why. This is why she was against the Brexit. This is why she's so pro-European Union, and she's so pro-United Nations. The bottom line, in a globalist mind, ten groups of people are a lot easier to, to control than 196 individual countries. Okay? Yeah. And now let's move to uh, reasons to vote Republican. Here's the big okay. one. Donald Trump is anti-abortion. <laughs> Page 13. 
He opposes Planned Parenthood and seeks to overturn Roe v. Wade, which has attributed to 60 million deaths. Trump, Donald Trump, intends to abolish the IRS, page 27. <laughs> which, yeah, amen. <laughs> which he states the IRS has become an ideological attack dog against conservative, pro-life, and libertarian organizations. Number three, he will repeat, repeal the Johnson Amendment, page 27 as well. Yes. This amendment has silenced pastors all across America, restricted them from talking about political stances, except for the Jim Baker Show. <laughs> the Johnson Amendment threatens churches that their 501c3 nonprofit status will be revoked if they speak on politics. Number four, Donald Trump is against Common Core. Number five, yes. Number five, Donald Trump supports Bibles in school. Woo! Page 33. He encourages... He encourages the states to offer the Bible as a literature curriculum in schools. Donald Trump, Trump seeks to repeal Obamacare. <laughs> Donald Trump is an avid supporter of Israel. The platform, I want to be very clear on this, the platform says we recognize Jerusalem as the eternal and indivisible capital of the Jewish state and call for the American embassy to be, mo to mo to be moved there in fulfillment of U.S. law. And also, Amazing. talking about this dividing the state of Israel, listen to what they say in the Republican platform on page 47. We oppose any measures intended to impose an agreement or to dictate borders or other terms. And we call for the immediate termination of all U.S. funding of any entity that attempts to do so. Our party is proud to stand with Israel now and always. Amen. Number eight, Donald Trump supports your constitutional right to bear arms. Number nine, Donald Trump believes refugees needed to be vetted more rigor rigorously. Yeah. Number 10, Donald Trump believes in hardening, this is on page 54, says it. Donald Trump believes in hardening the electric grid so that we aren't vulnerable to EMP and CME. Wow. Which based off of two congressional reports, two congressional reports, they state within those reports, 90% of the American population would be dead after one year if this type of event were to happen on American soil. And number 11, Donald Trump wants to build a wall. And this is to build a wall to ensure national security and build a wall to recognize our national sovereignty as opposed to globalism. And build a wall so that immigrants come in legally through the front door and not the back. Now, this is a man Very good, who's Matt. been behind this platform, a man that many of you have called a reprobate. And so I'm asking you to vote. And even if you don't vote the way I feel like you should vote, I want you to vote. I want everybody to step out. Amen. And at least when you vote, you can't say, well... I didn't try. Amen. And I want everybody to try. That's right. We have <laughs> Lieutenant General Boykin, hmm. and he wants to give you three reasons Brown. why you need to go out and vote tomorrow. General? Number one, I, <clears throat> I am greatly concerned about the future of America if uh, Hillary Clinton is elected. Number one, I think that the... Uh, all-out assault on Christians is going to increase at an unprecedented pace. And as Christians, we're going to be, we're going to have our backs against the wall because we stand for everything that is the opposite of what she and the Democratic Party and the liberals in general stand for. Number two, America is in great jeopardy from a variety of, of enemies. Some of those enemies are very conventional enemies like uh, Russia and North Korea and Iran, but some of them are asymmetric enemies like ISIS and the global jihad network. If you are not aware of just how dangerous they are, then you need to pay attention. And this, your, your vote must be reflected. Uh, your concern for this must be reflected in how you vote this year. The third thing is, 
If you do not understand that we have no nation if we don't have secure borders. Mm -hmm. we, you, you can't, the first obligation of any administration is to protect the American people. Mm -hmm. So you have to have secure borders. That is not discriminatory. It is, it reflects a reality that we have evil people that will exploit any opportunity to come across our borders and to do us harm. And many of them are ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Hamas, Hezbollah, and other terrorist organizations. All of those things are going to be issues that are either going to uh, turn to a positive or they're going to continue to deteriorate depending on how you vote. One of my dear friends, the general, yes. who has said he will advise Trump. Absolutely. Trump has several yeah. hundred generals and, 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 and leaders in, in our army and, yes. and navy and all yes. that are standing with him, advising right. him. He's not going to make decisions by himself. That's insane. He's a builder of the biggest buildings in America. And when you build a building, you can't do it all by yourself. Right. It takes a team. Does. And I'll tell you, to make this dream work, it's going to take teamwork. Amen. And I believe, I've never seen, Donald has, I, I mean, I was at a meeting yesterday on the phone, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, the who's who, I mean, the holy roller preachers were there. The high church preachers were there. I mean, you know, he has people like Dr. David Jeremiah. He's got people like uh, Kenneth, Kenneth Copeland. Copeland. He's, I mean, you know, Kenneth Copeland is, is a word of faith preacher. you got Holy Ghost preachers. You've Jim got Carlo, James. Baptist yeah. preachers, the, the greatest guys in the world. And I told his assistant, I told her, I said, Trump has brought more church leaders together than the church has ever seen together. Pretty amazing. He has yeah. meetings with up to a thousand preachers. Pretty amazing. Dr. Daryl Scott yes. mm -hmm. is a dear friend, mm -hmm. and he's going to be on the show a lot. Yeah. And he is one of Trump's uh, advisors. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's right into it just. Here. He's just an amazing, amazing man. Right. And he's a blessing to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Listen to Dr. Daryl Scott. Let me say this before you know, I'm, I'm finished. Donald Trump, I believe, is God's agent for change, uh, to change the dynamics and the direction of this country. Contrary to popular opinion, he doesn't have a huge ego. But he does have a tremendous amount of self-confidence. He has a huge amount of self-confidence. Mm -hmm. And the thing I know about him is this. He won't be satisfied with being a good president. He won't be satisfied because he's very brand conscious, very image conscious. He wants to be the best president America has ever had. Yes. This is critical. Do not stay home. Do not uh, become apathetic or... Uh, concerning this election, go to the polls and make sure you vote. We want an overwhelming turnout mm -hmm. by sheer force of numbers. If we get out and vote, if we get out and vote, we can make a change right. that cannot be That's right. erased. Okay. Yes. Well, I've never seen so many of the great men of God, women of God, right. coming together. Yes. And they were all hesitant at first, it seems like. Sure. There were so many lies being told, yeah. still lies being told. I mean, if all you can talk about is, you know, somebody's sin of 10 years ago or 30 years ago, you know, that's not much of a platform to deal with. And I, I believe with all of my heart that God makes changes. You know, God forgives. Yes. Yeah. And I do know this, Donald Trump is praying every day. And he's got so many preachers around him, if he isn't saved or gets saved, he'll never get saved. <laughs> I mean, James Robinson's flying on his jet with him all the time now. And I'll tell you, you gotta know James Robinson. James <laughs> Robinson is not gonna sit back and he is gonna say, are you born again? <laughs> Mr. Trump, who is Jesus? You know who Jesus is. And I want to tell you something. We Christians better start practicing what we preach, that you can be born again. 
that whosoever will may come. And thank God we're not electing a, a pope or a priest or a preacher or a minister. We're electing a, a president of the United States. And it's time for people to not sit back and say, well, I, I, I don't agree with either one of them, so I'm not going to vote. Was well, just going to, that's what you said, or that's what thousands, millions said for the last eight years. Mm -hmm. And what happened? What happened? Everything about the Bible is almost gone out of America. Right. Mm -hmm. The Bible's illegal. It's gone on and deeper and deeper and deeper. Yes. We're in the biggest mess America's ever been. Yes. And I'm saying it's time for us to do something. And these are the last few hours. Right. Tomorrow's mm -hmm. election day. I want you to get out and vote. And I'll tell you what. If we don't do something to change America. That's right. If we don't turn from our own sins and repent as a nation, we will hear from heaven if we do that. But if we don't turn to God, judgment, I believe. I believe the shaking that's coming that came to Italy. Mm. Italy turned their back on Israel, trying to divide Israel, voting to divide Israel. And what happened? The worst earthquakes, one right after another, has yes. hit their nation. And they even said that this was the worst uh, earthquake, a 6.6, .6, that Italy has had in three decades. And it came right after this decision, yes. Mm. Rabbi, do you think, how can, how can God has looked upon America? You know, you look at some of the kings. You're an expert on the Old Testament. Some of the kings of the Old Testament were pretty bad. Uh -huh. And, and, mm -hmm. and if you see, well, and they killed 10,000 people, or they did this, or they did that. But I don't read anything in the Old Testament about anybody killing 60 million of their babies. Mm, yeah. Does, yeah. Can God just sit back and wink at that? He couldn't then, and he couldn't, he can now. We are following the pattern of Israel, and we are following this progression. And when the prophet Jeremiah, he went to the leaders and he took this, this vessel and smashed it in front and said, this is why judgment's coming, because you have offered up the children. This was, there's only a few issues where God finally said, that's it. One of them was the offering up of your children, mm -hmm. and that is what we are doing. And that is in between the candidates. Let me, let me say this too, to those, because there are, there are sincere believers who struggle right now, yeah. not about not, not being apathetic and not voting. We, we understand that. Yeah. We are called to be the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. We have to make a difference however we can. And we just saw what has happened by us not doing that for the last eight years. But at the same time, there are those who struggle because, let's be, you yes. know, totally out here. Right. And that is that you know, Donald Trump hasn't lived a life of exemplary of Christian values. Certainly Hillary Clinton has not. Um, there are yeah. concerns and all that. Ronald there are, Reagan did yeah, not. Yeah, no, they're not. No, And, and, I'm, and I'm not, and I'm, I'm going. Don't yeah. worry. Yeah. We're here. No, no. But, no, I, but, I'm <laughs> <laughs> but, but here's the thing. And so there are very sincere believers struggling with it. But here's the thing. Really it's not what he was. That's not what matters. It's going to be what will he do? Right. What, will, right. what will she do? Right. What are the issues? Because that's what's going to affect everything. Not, yeah. not the other things are, are not going to affect much. But every issue, the platform will. The issue of abortion, as we say, this broad judgment. Very clear difference. Gigantic difference. Hillary Clinton has said she is for abortion up to the time of birth up to the time of birth. That is gigantic. She has always been a champion of this. I remember, I'm in New York, around there. I remember when she was first elected, uh, and her, her biggest thing was abortion. That was the biggest thing, got the biggest applause. That is gigantic in the sight of God. If I or anyone here, if we, I'm gonna, if we vote for a platform and for a candidate that is clearly going to expand abortion, then we are part of abortion. Uh, that means, wow. that means, I, that means, means the blood is on our hands because if one just one more baby is killed because of that and it will be it'll be far more than one more then we are responsible for that we cannot have that blood on our hands on the other hand the republican platform is extremely strong about this uh, for life and Donald Trump has said clearly he is against abortion he is for life at the same time it's go it goes beyond that the 
Democratic platform and candidate is more brazen than ever. They used to kind of couch the words about abortion, but now they're, 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 they've gone totally out. Abortion, not just abortion, but but the removal, as Zach said, of the Hyde Amendment, which has yeah. been there since the 1970s, protecting that our money does not go directly to abortion. So what this means is that if I'm voting for this, I'm voting for my money ultimately going for the killing of an unborn child. Mm -hmm. So how can I say I don't have blood on my hands for that? Yeah. So yeah. that is a very, that's an absolute issue here. These are issues, gigantic issues. Uh, not only that, that there are th there are many cases going on right now. There was Hobby Lobby. They just they just happened to get out of it. Be, mm -hmm. they, the government wanted to force them to pay for abortions. They got, they won by one vote on the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court wow. is gigantic because wow. if this wow. changes, if this, if it's even one, one justice, right. it means believers will lose every case. They will be forced to take part in abominations every single case. And there's many cases right now yeah. that are gigantic. Yeah. So this is gigantic. So what I want to say, I'm encouraging those who are struggling, and I understand it, and we, yeah. we, have, to, we have to respect that, but it's not about the person here now. It's yeah. about what will happen. It's about what will you do. And if we don't, we have a chance now. As we said, it, had we voted before, even though it wasn't perfect candidates, we know that, right. but look what happened because we didn't. Look what happens. Right. So we have to put that. We have to pray. God is our only hope. But the point is there is a gigantic difference. And if, I don't think there's ever been such a difference between platforms in the history of America, mm -hmm. ever. And so if we, don't, if we don't act now, then when are we ever going to act? And then we cannot complain when our rights are taken away, mm -hmm. when they are persecuting believers, when they're indoctrinating your children against the gospel, when they're killing children with your money, mm -hmm. you cannot complain. We can do something, so I also encourage you. Ta do be the light we're supposed to be. Be the salt you're supposed to be. Is that stand. one of the most important yeah. issues? Is so the, good, the right. killing of our babies? Yes. We will be right back after this special message. Who are you? A teacher. A, A teacher, teacher of what? what? Mr. Mr. Reeves. From the best-selling author, Jonathan Kahn, who brought us The Harbinger and the Mystery of the Shemitah, comes a life-changing journey to uncover the mysteries of God. When you open the Book of Mysteries, you'll be transported on a journey through a desert to encounter a man known only as the Teacher, who will take you on an odyssey each day, revealing to you new mysteries of spiritual truth, end times revelation, and the secrets of overcoming this world. Explore all 365 mysteries in this unique daily devotional written to captivate your mind and bring you a unique, mystical, Christian, and historical perspective of God's work in this universe. The, the ninth of our mystery that all these things happened again and again in, the, in history from God to the Jewish people on the ninth of Av. But there's another part of it that's called the Tenth of Av Mystery. And while they're losing their greatest refuge, God is planning another refuge. It'll be the greatest refuge for it will be America. And the same, the, the same think, place. I think the, the 365th one, the last one, <laughs> is powerful. The two shall be one. It is God in us. Yes. Mm. Our marriage in us. Live this day in the miracle of your existence. Take account of every heartbeat and make your moments worthy of each one. Is that good? It's so good. The Book of Mysteries by Rabbi Jonathan Kahn can be in your hands for a donation to this ministry of $20 or more. If you would like to share the Book of Mysteries with your friends and family, donate to the ministry and you'll receive a baker's dozen. That amounts to $15.38 per book. Unlock the mysteries of the universe by getting your copy of the Book of Mysteries by best-selling author Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Call today, 1-888-988-1588, or go to our website at www.jimbakershow.com. You can also write to us at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri 65615. Thank you for your prayers and support to this ministry. I'll tell you what, we just had a baby uh, at Lori's house we this week. We did? Well, yes. Um. And uh, she had no place to go. She was kicked out. 
from where she was. She had one day left to live there. She turned on her cell phone or something, and sh something popped up, one of our e little ads, yeah. A like an ad, an app ad or something. And it said Lori's house. Right. And it talked about what Lori's house would do, but help you with your baby, help you have your baby, and all. And so she called a number that was there and talked to Vicky right. at Lori's house, our, our director. Yes. And they said, come on, come on, we want you. Yes. And she said, Jim, she said, I had no place to go. And when I found your ad, and said that you, I would be welcome. I called and they said, come. Mm. And she said, and she just came home from the hospital. She said, I couldn't wait to get back home wow. to Lori's house. Right. And, and she'll stay here until she's <laughs> solid rock, ready to be. And, and she said, I said, well, what's, what did you name this baby? Little girl. She, it was a little girl. And she said, I named her Haven mm -hmm. huh. because huh. God gave me a haven here huh. at Morningside, yeah. at Lori's house. Yeah. So you're told, you, yes. you mentioned one baby. One. Yeah. Well, and people say, well, Jim, oh, you're, you're going to stay in a baby here and a baby there, you know. It's one baby that's not going to be dead. That's How right. can you say these babies? Look, look at my grandchildren. My God, Amazing. how many grandchildren do we have? I'm losing they, count. We're, we're multiplying <laughs> daily, I think. But my I'm not but, uh, little oh. little Jackson, he oh, he's he just, just turned, turned one. one. But, he's so but he, he started walking, I think, at ten months. Oh. And, and you see that little thing walking all <laughs> over the place. He's so smart. He's one of the smartest kids in the world. To think that we we. We, we, we have a person running for office that said it's all right to pull little Jonathan or James or whatever, pull them out of the mother's womb and kill him, pull the legs off, uh. tear him apart, a full-born, a full-grown baby. That's why we're saving babies here. But I believe that 